This is part 2 of the RBF nodes add-on tutorial. Check out part 1 if you need to learn the basics of the add-on. Now as a practical example, I'm going to show how we can automate the rotation of the clavicle based on the rotation of the arm. Using regular constraints and drivers, this is extremely difficult, but using RBF it is quite doable. You can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. So I'm going to create my RBF node editor and create the basic setup. My rig is called skeleton rig, so I'm going to set Input object is skeleton rig, and when I select the rig, I get a second field which will allow me to choose a bone from that rig. This is very common behavior in Blender, you should be familiar with it. The driving bone will be the FK upper arm, and I'm going to give a possible solution for IK as well, but for now we'll be using the FK, so let's switch to FK. By the way, I'm using this um, skeleton model because I had it lying around, but if you just create a basic um, human meta rig and generate it, you will have the same rig, so you can follow along if you like. So I want to use the upper arm fk.l for the input object, and the output object will be, again, the skeleton rig, and I want to influence the shoulder.l. The driving property so the input will be rotation input. And the upper arm is in quaternions. So I'm going to switch this to quaternion and plug the rotation into the object input. And the output property will be again rotation. So shift A, output, rotation. And the shoulder is actually in Euler. So I'm going to keep this to Euler, connect it and enable X, Y and Z. And that is actually the full setup. Now I can start adding poses. I'll select the shoulder and the upper arm and press Shift H to focus on only these bones. And now in the default pose of the rig, I'm going to add the first pose, which as you remember should be the default pose. And now we want to start setting up some extreme poses for the skeleton. One obvious one is that when the arm is raised up, I also want the shoulder to rotate up. But before that, it may be a good idea to set a pose in which the clavicle is not yet affected. So maybe if I raise the arm to around this position, the clavicle won't be activated yet. So I'm going to create a pose for this state. Now I'm going to rotate the arm all the way up and also rotate the clavicle up. And add a pose. Now I'm going to recall pose 0 to bring things to the default position. And then I'll rotate the arm down and at the same time rotate the clavicle down and add a pose. At this point the setup should be working already, so let's activate RBF and try to play with it. And you'll see that we're getting something that makes sense. Here up to this pose the clavicle is not really activated and when I go past the default pose it starts to go down and then as I raise the arm above the T pose the clavicle starts to move up. But we also have other positions, such as when I move the arm forward, the clavicle should react and move forward as well. So let's reset the RBF, and that will allow me to rotate the clavicle again. I'll set up a pose, and click Add Pose. Then I'll set one more for when the arm is kind of backwards. Add Pose and activate the setup. Now, if I rotate the arm up, I'm getting the behavior that I expect, but as I rotate the arm beyond the extreme pose that I set in RBF, the clavicle seems to go back down. So here, if I switch to linear, I found out that it gives me more predictable results. So now I can just double tap R and rotate the arm around and I'm getting something that is quite interesting and plausible. And that is just with um, six poses. You may want to try adding more poses. 
for example, this is the arm raised, but the arm can also rotate on the y-axis. And that is technically a different pose. So you can try setting up such additional poses and see how they affect your setup. I find it amazing that the RBF setup doesn't seem to create any dependency loops. If I reset the rig and reset RBF, or in other words, turn it off, and if I just try to create a very simple dependency between the upper arm and the clavicle, such as a copy rotation, immediately we'll get a dependency loop that is impossible to work with. So I'm going to undo. But RBF for some reason does not create such dependency loops. I'll activate the RBF setup again. So now we have it working in FK and I'm sure that the question will arise, what about IK? Because currently if I unhide everything and switch to IK mode, the clavicle automation will not work in IK mode. So here is a possible solution and as everything in this video, don't take it as an absolute solution. I tried it and it seems to work, but I am new to RBF myself. So everything I show in this video is just meant to show the basics and get more people using the add-on so that we can find out what works and what doesn't. Anyway, here is my solution for IK. I'm going to reset the RBF setup and make some space here for the 3D view. Select the upper arm FK, go to edit mode, and it is selected right now. I'm going to press shift D and duplicate it. And my display is in B bone, so I can press Ctrl, Alt and S to make this bone thicker. And I'm also going to rename it to upper arm rbf.l, for example. Then back to pose mode, my RBF bone has the same widget as the upper arm FK. So let's go to bone tab viewport display and disable the custom object shape. Okay, now this is my RBF bone. So now I want to make this bone move with the upper arm in both FK mode and IK mode. So we need a bone that moves in both modes. And in most rigs, that would be a deforming bone. So for Rigify, we have deforming bones on layer 29. Shift click on it. And if I hide my RBF bone, here is this deformation bone that I can use. I am in IK mode now. So if I move the arm, you'll see that the deforming bone is rotating. And if I switch to FK mode, again, it is moving with the upper arm. Okay, so I'll press Alt H, select the DEF bone, and also shift select my RBF bone and press Shift H. So here's the solution that I found. I'll select the deforming bone, press F2 and just copy its name. I'll need the name in a second. Then select the RBF bone, right click on one of the rotation axes and choose Add Driver. And then right click again and choose Open Driver Editor. Select the driver, set the expression to var, object to my skeleton rig. And for the bone, I'm going to paste this name that I just copied. Type is W rotation. Mode is quaternion. And for space, I found out that I have to use local space. I'm not sure why, but world space didn't give me the results that I wanted. And this driver makes the RBF bone copy the W rotation of the deforming bone. And I wanted to copy all of the axes, not just W. So go to the transforms, right click on the W where I have the driver, copy driver, and then on X, paste driver, Y, paste driver, Z, paste driver. Now in the driver editor, select the X quaternion rotation and just switch type to X rotation, Y, switch to Y rotation, Z to Z rotation. And now the last step in the process is to go to the Deforming bone, select it, go to bone relationships, go to edit mode, and I want to copy this parent. So just select everything here and press Ctrl C. I'll go to my RBF bone, delete its parent and paste the parent from the DEF bone. And with this setup, the RBF bone should copy the exact rotation of the deforming bone.
right? If I try rotating the arm in FK mode, the RBF bone is rotating with the DEF bone. If I switch to IK mode, again, the RBF bone is moving with the arm. So now go to your RBF setup and for the driving bone, type RBF to find the RBF bone and select it. And now I should be able to activate the RBF. Looks fine. And now I'm in IK mode. And if I just move the IK, you'll see that the clavicle is automated. Right? And if I switch to FK, the automation still works. This is my solution for a clavicle automation using RBF that works in FK and IK mode. But again, I want to emphasize that this solution may not be perfect. There may be better solutions or in certain situations, it may not work correctly. But I hope it's useful as a starting point. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check out academy.cgdive.com if you're interested in exclusive CG Dive content.